Today I want to tell you a big secret, you know I like to give my secrets away, about dish making. And this has been very, very important for me throughout the years. So I'll tell the secret right away. The big reason why I make so good instruments is because I always keep a great one from a certain type and I then later on compare it to the new ones that come. Now, it seems maybe obvious, but it's very tempting to sell a good ditch as well, because usually you can get a good money for a good ditch. But it's very important for me to have this orientation, to have a reference point. And I need to have reference point in each type that I make. So I can't compare a low F sharp and a high F sharp. They just have no correlation. It's like two different instruments, like a violin and a guitar, or at least violin and a cello. So I need a quite similar didgeridoo, both in key and in type of uh, the dig. The type is even more important. So in front of me I have three digits. The middle one is the spirit. Um, spirit is one of the most important didgeridoos in my life. I have it maybe nine, ten years, I don't remember exactly. Uh, I made it because I was inspired by an old dig made by Frank Thiel, who which Andre had, and he called it the super dig because it was that powerful, responsive D. Uh, this one is D sharp, sort of ish. And uh, it took me several attempts to uh, get to this point. I, the first few digits weren't bad, but they weren't as great. And then I came to this one, which I found to be quite incredible. And I kept it for two reasons. Reason number one, I really wanted it. And reason number two, I really needed it. Actually, there were three reasons. The reason number three is that I have a reference point for the future digits of this type. Because once I have it, it's much easier to make it again in that kind of quality. Because with, when, it, when a dish is this good, you can make it and you can chisel it and then you can stop because it feels, well, I'm done. It's a great dish. Yes, but it can be greater. And only by having reference you know that. In this range of didgeridoos, I always make them individual. So I don't drill them and leave them like that. I always drill them and then chisel them and then try to find another another kind of balance, a little bit different balance. So for example, this one is the bassiest, yes, this one has a little bit less bass and this one is the most middlish. This one is the loudest of the three. But overall, they are similar. And the thing is that our mind is a very tricky thing. So you come and you, you take the digit into an elevator and it sounds phenomenal, fantastic. You, you take it to the bathroom, it's even better. And you think it's a great dig, but then you go and meet other dig players and you realize mm, it's not, first of all, it's not that loud and actually it's not that great anyway. It's not that, you know, resonant. It just gets lost. And then you realize, oh, it's not that precise. And then you realize, oh, it doesn't have that great toots. So it's easy to get lost because in some positions in the house or in some moments we feel in a certain way and things can become unrealistically good or unrealistically bad. But when you have another dig and you take it one next to another and you try it maybe even at a few different spots in case that one is particular, sounds particularly good in, in one spot, then you have a much more honest assessment of what a dig is, how good it is. And only because I have this dig, which is very, very, very good, I'm able to push these digits far enough to get to that point. Otherwise, I could try this dig before it was finished and say, well, it's good enough, it sounds great. Yes, great, but not as great as this one. So because I keep of each type of dig that one phenomenal one, I'm able to make as good or better than those. For example, these are better tuned than this one. So they have some advantages that at the time when I was making this one, I couldn't do because I didn't know. But now, because I have it, I can keep making as great or greater digits. So what that means for you, if you are a dig maker, it means that you can and should probably keep some digits for yourself, you know, to learn later from them. Um, 
and if you're a player well you can always go and look for the maker for the maker's specialties so to say you can ask the maker like what are the best types of digits that you can do because for example I can't do all types of digits equally well like I'm totally lost if you ask me um, well, not totally lost, but I, I'm not nearly as confident as if I have to make a didgeridoo for Zalem or Gautier as if I have to do a dig for myself. Um, well, I hope you find this helpful and interesting and you can enjoy a little bit the comparison of the digits. Mm -hmm.